a man makes a surprising find up in the Arctic. A bunch of frozen monkeys, still miraculously alive. The stakes are sky high because if just one of them had gotten away, it would have been a disaster for the folks at the Arctic Bio Research Station or Arct Tech Biosystems Research Facility. This place sits way above the 83rd parallel, and it's where scientists tinker with a seriously dangerous virus. Then, out of the blue, a terrible accident happens, wiping out the entire team except for a virologist named Peter. But Peter's luck takes a dark twist as the virus infects him, setting the stage for a looming crisis. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, an epidemiologist named Dr. Alan Farragut has no clue about the chaos in the Arctic. He's just gearing up for a regular presentation, and he's got Dr. Sarah Jordan backing him up. She's been harboring a secret crush on him and is always there to support him in every way she can. But Alan's world goes haywire when he gets an urgent message from the Arctic station. A military officer named Sergio Becerro wants Alan's help in putting together a team to tackle the outbreak. The squad includes Alan, his ex-wife Dr. Julia Walker, Dr. Doreen Bowl, Sarah, and Major Sergio. The higher-ups at Araria Corporation insist that Julia's gotta be part of the team, even though she has no clue about her crucial role. Her role as Alan's personal link to the crisis becomes apparent when it's revealed that the infected Peter is actually Alan's own brother. Tensions escalate as the team prepares to board a plane headed for the Arctic, and long-standing conflicts between Alan and Julia resurface. Their divorce, sparked by Julia's affair with Peter, continues to cast a shadow over their interactions. Upon reaching the research station, they are welcomed by the station's director, Dr. Hiroshi T, and his adopted son, Daniel, who serves as the chief of security. The situation is dire, with Peter's critical illness and the other 146 base workers freely moving about without following quarantine measures. Hiroshi suspects that the infection is airborne, but the departure of the helicopter has left the scientists stranded beyond the Arctic Circle with no means of escape. They are provided with access keys to all doors as they examine Peter's condition, leading to the discovery of a mysterious black liquid coursing through his veins. In a shocking turn of events, Peter, exhibiting unnatural strength, launches an attack on Alan, seemingly determined to transmit the peculiar fluid. A sedative administered by Julia temporarily subdues him, leaving the entire team in a state of bewilderment regarding the virus's nature. Ven takes the initiative to investigate the possible source of the infection, suspecting that the monkeys used in experiments might be the culprits. However, Daniel denies any existence of monkeys on the station. Suspicion mounts when the team discovers monkey fur, providing evidence that monkeys are indeed present. As the team examines Peter's deceased colleagues, who have been transformed into a black liquid by the virus, they confront a phenomenon that defies scientific understanding. Alan presses Hiroshi for answers, but the director fails to provide clear information. In the process, they stumble upon Peter's final video, adding to the mystery. In the recorded message, Peter offers little insight but urgently signals them to flee. Simultaneously, they realize that Peter has managed to escape, leaving them with the unsettling realization that an infected individual is now lurking in the ventilation system. To prevent further infection, gas is pumped through the ducts in an attempt to neutralize Peter. Driven by his personal connection to his brother, Alan ventures into the ventilation system in search of Peter. Meanwhile, Doreen and Sergio make a discovery as they find empty monkey cages, suggesting that the monkeys have gone feral and escaped, except for one that attacks Doreen. Fortunately, Sergio is quick to sedate the aggressive monkey, and Doreen escapes unharmed. Deep within the ventilation system, Alan encounters an immobile man who's missing a hand, unmistakably the work of Peter. During their examination of materials from the infected individuals, Julia identifies an unknown virus that defies scientific understanding, causing unprecedented transformations in cells. Simultaneously, Sergio secretly assembles a data transmission station and discreetly sends vital information to his superiors, unbeknownst to the rest of the team. In his search, he stumbles upon frozen monkeys who'd made a run for it. He heads back to the base and drops some hints to Hiroshi that he's shared info with their higher-ups. Clearly, these guys are keeping a big secret. Peter, using a guard's hand, sneaks into one of the labs and goes after some local scientists, infecting them with the mysterious black liquid. Three of the infected scientists manage to escape and could spread the infection further. By the next morning, Doreen is studying one of the monkeys when an infected person comes close. Instead of attacking, this person experiences hallucinations. The second infected guy is caught in a corridor and taken to quarantine. The rest of the station's crew is freaked out by these events and demand an evacuation, but that's a no-go. If potentially infected folks leave the station, it could kick off a worldwide epidemic from this unknown virus. Sarah tends to the infected individuals in isolation, including one who's in terrible pain and needs morphine. In the storage area, Peter nearly goes after Sarah, but his only goal is to get to Julia. Meanwhile, Julia learns what Peter had been up to lately. Turns out, he'd been experimenting with animals using new and unknown virus variants called Narvik A and Narvik B. Julia plans to reproduce these experiments in order to uncover what happened to Peter, an infected scientist, 
He confides in Doreen that the research facility had been working on a drug designed to modify human genes. This revelation triggers a violent outburst from Doreen, who attempts to forcibly transmit the dark liquid into her mouth. However, Doreen manages to subdue Julia. Subsequently, Julia and Hiroshi are conducting experiments on rats using mysterious viruses. After testing Narvik A, which proves lethal, they move on to Narvik B. In this case, everyone survives but exhibits zombie-like behavior, capable of infecting others. However, a small percentage eventually regains some normal when treated. This virus is unlike anything the world has ever seen, making carriers extremely dangerous. The infected individuals, held in isolation, demand to be released, and even take Sarah hostage. Alan arrives for negotiations and assures them that a vaccine is in the works to cure them. To show his sincerity, he removes his protective suit. One of the uninfected scientists from the station wants to escape to reveal the horrifying experiments to the world. However, Sergio intercepts him and forces him to stay silent, as the higher-ups do not tolerate leaks. Alan is furious and demands to know why his brother Peter was involved in these horrific experiments with an unknown virus. Hiroshi offers no explanation, only saying that Peter's work with Narvik was his own initiative. In the evening, Hiroshi tenderly gazes at a photo album featuring Julia, then sits at a microscope, removing his lenses. In reality, Hiroshi has strikingly bright silver eyes, unlike any human. Julia was in the midst of taking a shower when Peter suddenly materialized and coerced her into ingesting the ominous black liquid against her will. Overwhelmed, Julia lost consciousness. The following morning, Alan discovered Julia in the shower, but decided not to disclose her strange encounter with Peter, as it felt more like a distant dream than a reality. In the lab, Alan crossed paths with Peter, who desperately sought help, but then lost consciousness. The number of infected individuals isolated grew, and some of the more unruly ones began to roam freely. Concerned about Peter's potential escape, it was decided to transfer the infected to a lower, more secure level within the building, transforming the entire floor into a new isolation ward. Julia, when gazing at herself in the mirror, started experiencing hallucinations of her body undergoing grotesque mutations after being infected. However, these nightmarish visions turned out to be mere illusions. To identify all the infected individuals, Sarah and Julia collaborated on developing a rapid response test to detect the virus. While working, Julia noticed Sarah's hand trembling severely, raising suspicions that it might be a symptom of Narvik infection. This left Julia regarding Sarah with doubt. Doreen was determined to continue researching the monkey that may have infected Peter after the Narvik B injection. However, the original monkey had disappeared. Sergio, on the other hand, knew where to find another infected monkey. He led Doreen to a location where a group of monkeys had gathered, indicating that Sergio had found this spot intentionally, not by chance. Sergio confessed that he had visited the place when transmitting data to the Pentagon, because some believed Hiroshi was intentionally infecting people. Meanwhile, Sarah successfully developed a rapid response test. Test tubes containing biomaterial from the infected individuals turned green, while those with samples from healthy ones remained clear. Julia, in secret, conducted the test on herself and was surprised to find out that she was healthy. Doreen introduces a growth hormone to infected cells, causing them to multiply at an astonishing rate. Sergio implores Doreen not to disclose this experiment to Alan. However, Alan accidentally stumbles upon information about a virus cure named Cedra. Hiroshi admits that he had developed Cedra as a universal remedy for all diseases, but after recovery from the virus, 75% of the subjects face a fatal outcome. Hence, Cedra is an imperfect and risky solution. In response, scientists request that all personnel at the base take the test and isolate the infected individuals on the lower level. Julia insists that Sarah undergo the test, and Sarah is relieved to find out she's healthy. Nonetheless, a third of the station's personnel become ill. Tragically, one of the infected individuals becomes excessively aggressive and kills a colleague, leading to panic as people gather in the hallway. Suddenly, the most dangerous infected person charges towards Julia, and Alan tries to eliminate her. However, his efforts prove in vain as Julia remains infected and must stay on the lower level. Meanwhile, Sarah's hand trembles as she takes some pills, revealing that she is indeed seriously ill, but not due to Narvik. She's secretly battling terminal cancer. Julia decided to double-check the result of her test. To her surprise, her test tube remained clear despite her infection. This indicated that the test might be ineffective, and people were being isolated based on the wrong principle. She attempted to inform Alan, but Sergio cut off communication by detonating the satellite antenna. Her attempts to make her way upstairs proved futile. By morning, the individuals in isolation became desperate. They wanted to disable the air filtration system throughout the building to pressure Hiroshi into releasing them. Julia vehemently opposed this, leading to her placement in the corridor. After the antenna explosion, communication with the outside world became impossible, leaving them with no hope of assistance. The infected individuals faced a grim fate, 
and Sergio had done everything to prevent anyone from learning about the horrors at the station. Few realized that he was the actual traitor. As desperation mounted, the infected disabled the air filtration system, leaving everyone with just six hours to survive. Hiroshi went to negotiate with the infected while scientists continued their work on the vaccine, but so far, success eluded them. Meanwhile, Alan visited Peter, who was in a deteriorating condition. He attempted to save his brother using Cedra despite the grim prognosis. Miraculously, Peter began to feel better. On the lower level, an aggressive infected individual tried to attack Julia. She was saved by someone in a spacesuit. This rescuer introduced herself as Jane and was uninfected. Sarah encounters a woman who displays symptoms of the virus but tests negative. This revelation prompts Sarah to question the reliability of the test. She informs Alan, and together they start working on improving the test. Alan, in person, reaches out to Peter, who has regained consciousness and the ability to speak. Unfortunately, Peter cannot provide any coherent information about his research on the station, as he mainly performed routine tasks. Hiroshi had persistently questioned him about Julia. Shortly thereafter, the virus resurfaces in Peter's body. He apologizes for involving Julia and stops breathing, with Alan taking over to sustain his life. Meanwhile, Julia and Jane decide to explore the lower level, where they stumble upon Julia's childhood initials, suggesting she had been there before. Hiroshi arrives to negotiate with the infected individuals who had disabled the air filtration system. He persuades them to turn it back on, but unexpectedly turns hostile against them. Subsequently, he goes in search of Julia, and even the most aggressive infected individuals avoid him. Darren continues his research and makes a groundbreaking discovery. The virus acts as a transporter for an unknown substance that can fundamentally alter a person's genetic makeup. Although this substance remains a mystery to science, it's evident that it can bring significant internal changes to a person. Sergio, armed with this information, stages an incident to eliminate Doreen, making it appear as if a shelf with rats had fallen on her. He then sets fire to all the monkeys, and when they thaw, they start to come back to life, only to be consumed by the flames. Sergio notifies the authorities that he's prepared for evacuation from the station, but is instructed to locate and evacuate a specific doctor. Meanwhile, Alan discovers Doreen in a distressed state and suspects Daniel's involvement in her condition. The head of security reviews video footage from Doreen's laboratory and spots Sergio. Hiroshi, seeking Julia's assistance, deliberately injures himself on the lower level, and Julia agrees to accompany him. In the passageway leading to the operating room, Alan delves into Doreen's situation, gradually realizing that her injuries were no accident, but were inflicted intentionally. Sergio remains uncooperative, stoking suspicions. He drops hints to Alan, suggesting that the elusive Dr. Ofit holds the answers to their myriad questions. The military officer's sole focus is on locating this enigmatic figure and leaving the station at the earliest opportunity. Sarah's health takes a dire turn, pushing her to resort to morphine for relief. During Alan's visit, she makes a feeble attempt to harm him, but he discerns her drugged state and firmly encourages her to rest and recuperate in the passageway. In the tunnel, Hiroshi, Julia, and Jane face an onslaught from virus carriers. Everyone except Jane manages to find refuge in a secure room. Hiroshi, amidst the chaos, opens up and shares a poignant story about his daughter, who bore a striking resemblance to Julia, though she has yet to grasp the full import of these conversations. In the meantime, Alan confronts Daniel, blaming him for what happened to Doreen. However, Daniel proposes a closer investigation of Sergio. Together, they search Sergio's quarters and find evidence of his wrongdoing, including his desperate search for Ofit for evacuation. Daniel hurries outside to retrieve the upper part of Ofit from the snow, but Sergio arrives, assaulting Daniel and taking the container with Offit. Julia and Hiroshi reach the observation room, and she tends to his wound, realizing that Jane was just a virus-induced hallucination. Sergio is about to leave when Daniel confronts and exposes him to the freezing snow, but later retrieves him and brings him back. Alan, heartbroken, considers disconnecting his brother from life support, but Peter's brain shows signs of activity during the night. An unidentified person rescues Sergio from the snow. Julia's hallucinations worsen as the virus progresses, and she encounters a girl who resembles her childhood self. In another hallucination, Peter hints that that she must uncover secrets. Hiroshi cares for her, causing her to fall asleep before leaving through a hidden exit. Sergio wakes up in the home of an Eskimo woman named Anana, who won't release him and seeks information about the station and abducted children. Under pressure, Alan learns from Hiroshi that the Narvik B virus can cure diseases, including cancer, but hasn't been perfected. Daniel admits to disposing of Sergio, angering the director due to the risk of superior's intervention. Julia wakes up in her childhood home in Montana, while Alan and Sarah attempt to accelerate virus cell growth with terrifying results. They discover the virus can't survive in the cold and decide to place Peter in a cryogenic chamber. 
Sergio tries to escape from Anana, who reveals pictures of children abducted by Hiroshi three decades ago. Sergio confronts Daniel, only for Anana to reveal Daniel is her brother, Taluk, not Hiroshi's son. Julia's hallucinations intensify, and her friends and Hiroshi appear to her at a table, driving her to the brink of madness. The mysteries remain unsolved. Peter's cryogenics lower his temperature to 14 degrees, showing promise in curing the virus. Alan and Sarah grow closer. Daniel and Hiroshi search for Sergio, but Araria Corporation helicopters arrive, hinting at a new development. Meanwhile, Julia regains consciousness with silvery eyes, mirroring Hiroshi.